Feed represents the largest single production expense for cattle operations today. There are many different feedstuffs that can be included in the rations for cattle, but what matters are the nutrients that each feedstuff provides. Beef producers rely heavily on forages, but often supplementation of energy, protein, vitamins, and minerals are needed to meet beef cattle's nutrient requirements. Forages are plant materials, primarily plant leaves and stems, that are consumed by livestock. They provide fiber, which enhances proper digestion and ruminants. The primary methods of harvesting and preserving forage crops include putting up silage, haying, green chopping, and being harvested by the cattle. Common forages that are fed to cattle are warm season grasses like big blue sim, little blue sim, and Indian grass, cool season grasses like brum grass, rye grass, tall fescue, and timothy, shrubs like lead plant, soapweed, and western sand cherry, and forbs like milkweed, cudweed sagewor, and prairie clover. Forage quality is the major factor that determines the amount of a forage that cattle can eat. As a forage matures, nutrient quality decreases and the intake decreases because it takes longer for the animal to digest the forage. Forages that are more mature will have an increase in stems and a decrease in leaves, which will decrease the quality of the forage. Forages that are found in a pasture can be divided into five different categories, warm season perennials, warm season annuals, cool season perennials, cool season annuals, and legumes. Warm season perennials are the best grasses for cow-calf operations since they do not need to be planted every year. Warm season annuals' primary role are for hay production and grazing. Cool season perennials are normally rapid early spring growers. These grasses can be grazed by late April or early May and are palatable for all livestock classes. Legumes are another forage that may be found in the pasture. Legumes have an ability to fix their own nitrogen and are used in all segments of the beef industry. Forages and concentrates are mixed together to form a ration. Now let's talk about concentrates that are fed to beef cattle. Concentrates are feeds that are contain a high density of nutrients and are normally low in fiber content but high in total digestible nutrients or commonly referred to as TDN. The primary roles of concentrated feeds are to provide concentrated sources of necessary nutrients for livestock production. Concentrates are not only include macronutrients for energy and protein, but also specific nutrients such as amino acids, fatty acids, enzymes, vitamins, and minerals. Now we will look at some of the common concentrates and byproducts found in Nebraska. Corn is a very digestible and palatable feed that is commonly fed to cattle. It contains energy in the form of starch, protein, phosphorus, fiber, and minerals that are beneficial to the cattle. Corn is about 70% starch on a dry matter basis, making corn an excellent feed to provide energy in the ration. Within the beef industry, corn can be used in many different types of growing, backgrounding, and finishing dyes. Widely used byproduct in many states are distiller grains. Distiller grains are produced through the dry milling process of ethanol. Through this process, distiller grains can either come out as wet or dry, condensed distiller solubles, distiller grains with solubles, modified distiller grains with solubles or solubles. Distiller grains are rich in protein, energy, and phosphorus. Distiller grains byproducts are used as protein sources in diets and when economical are used as a TDN source. The next byproduct we are going to look at is corn gluten feed. This is a byproduct of the wet milling process which produces high fructose corn syrup which is used as a sweetener in soft drinks. The feed is made up of the portion of the corn kernel that remains after the starch, gluten, and germ are extracted. It is primarily composed of bran also known as the whole. This byproduct is normally marketed as a pellet, meal, or loose form. It is an economical protein and TDN supplement, but is low in calcium, so calcium needs to be supplemented in the diet if corn gluten is fed. Another common byproduct is soybean holes. Soybean holes are the byproduct of soybean processing during the extraction of soybean oil and soybean meal. During the process, soybeans are rolled or cracked to break into the bean and remove the hole. Soybean holes are excellent sources of digestible fiber and energy. They are normally fed in whole ground or pelleted forms. The following is a list of six essential nutrients beef cattle need to survive. Protein, fats, carbohydrates, minerals, vitamins, and water. The first nutrient that we are going to discuss is protein. Protein is found in the highest concentration of any nutrient except water, which we will talk about later. Protein is commonly expressed as crude protein, or CP, in the cattle diets. It has a variety of unique functions within the beef cow's body, ranging from protecting the body, like the hair and skin, digesting foods, enzymes, stimulating growth, 
hormones, or defending the animal against invading organisms. Proteins are made up of a long chain amino acids that are linked together. Microorganisms, mainly bacteria and protozoa, break down most dietary proteins and incorporate the nitrogen and amino acids in their own body tissue. The microorganisms have a protein requirement which needs to be met by digesting roughages to end products so that they can be utilized by the cattle. Protein requirements for beef cattle are met by protein that is synthesized by the microbes. Common feedstuffs that are high in protein are alfalfa, cool season grasses, high quality hay, range cubes, protein blocks, liquid supplements, and co-products. The next nutrient we will look at is water. Water is often overlooked and not considered as a nutrient when formulating rations. Water plays an essential role in the number of functions vital to the animal, such as digestion, nutrient transport, waste excretion, and temperature regulation. A number of factors make water requirements and needs difficult to access. Cattle's water intake is influenced by environmental temperature, class of livestock, and weight. The water intake increases as temperature increases and lactating cows will have a greater requirement than non-lactating cows. On average, cattle need to consume about 2% of their body weight in water per day in gallons. Now we will look at minerals and how they are needed by the beef cattle. Minerals play an important role in the health, growth, and reproduction of beef cows. The mineral requirements for beef cattle are established by the National Research Council, or NRC. There are two types of categories of minerals, macro minerals and trace minerals. First, we will take a look at macro minerals. Macro minerals are minerals that are required in large amounts Minerals that are classified as macro minerals are calcium, phosphorus, sulfur, sodium, chloride, and potassium. The two most important and most talked about macro minerals are calcium and phosphorus. Calcium and phosphorus requirements have to be considered together since these two minerals work hand in hand. Both of these minerals are major mineral constituents of bone. Calcium also contributes to muscle function while phosphorus contributes to metabolic functions throughout the body. In cereal grain diets, Phosphorus is normally higher than calcium, so calcium must be supplemented into the ration. The optimal ratio between calcium and phosphorus is 1.5 to 1 to 2 to 1. Common deficiency symptoms are reduced growth, decreased feed efficient, and decreased reproductive performance. The next macro mineral we will discuss is potassium. Cattle need potassium to maintain a normal body and organ function. Most forages supply an adequate amount of potassium, so direct supplementation of potassium is not needed in most cases. Potassium toxicity can occur when cool season grasses and legumes grow too quickly and can accelerate the onset of grass tetany by inhibiting magnesium absorption. In order to offset this from happening, a magnesium supplement needs to be provided to beef cattle when they are turned into the pastures early in the grazing season. Potassium deficiencies are common in high concentrate diets. If a deficiency is present, common symptoms are reduced intake, weight loss, and stiff joints. Now let's take a look at trace minerals. Trace minerals are required in very small amounts, hence trace in the name. Common trace minerals that are needed in the cattle diets are cobalt, copper, iodine, magnesium, manganese, selenium, and zinc. When putting out minerals for cattle, make sure that you read the tag to see if salt needs to be added or not. You also need to read the tag to see what the recommended intake should be per day to make sure that the cattle are consuming the right amount of mineral and not too much or too little. There are also chelated minerals or inorganic minerals. Inorganic minerals are the most common, but there are chelated minerals available. Chelated minerals are minerals that have metals that are bound to an organic compound such as an amino acid. These minerals are then absorbed more readily in the small intestine. Minerals are important for normal bodily function and physiological processes such as lactation and reproduction. Producers need to pay attention to dietary levels and their animals' requirements to meet herds' needs and to make the supplement cost effective. The stages of production and forage quality are the biggest factors that dictate the mineral demand that your herd will need. By better understanding basic nutrition, you will have a better understanding of what needs to be fed to your cattle to ensure that all requirements are met.